Today I want to talk about the Hugo Awards which were announced over the weekend. There's a whole load of kerfuffle around tactical voting by a group called the Sad Puppies or possibly the Rapid Puppies but which was a number of authors who are slightly more conservative and we're worried that the Hugos were becoming more diverse through political correctness more, more than anything else. I'm not going into that because my Twitter feed was blowing up all over the weekend and actually up, up until today about how diversity was actually has always been part of the science fiction and fantasy world, not least because the first science fiction book is probably Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. So without her, we wouldn't have any of the books that are coming out now and we wouldn't have authors from HG or Wells onwards who were interested in science and its effects on human beings. But what I really want to talk about in terms of the Hugo Awards was the really exciting news that two of the winners were writers of Chinese descent. The novel that won for best novel was The Three Body Problem by Liu Qishen. Um, translated by Ken Liu, who's also a, a science fiction author of Chinese descent. So what's really interesting about that is obviously it's science fiction in translation, which isn't something that actually wins a lot of awards in terms of fiction that's published in English. And so I just wanted to highlight the fact that uh, it's really exciting for me as a writer of Chinese descent um, to see someone else winning at that level. And I haven't read the book yet, but it is very, very good. Apparently, all the reviews are, are absolutely raving over it. It's, it's just been optioned in China for a film trilogy, so that's going to be quite exciting to see what comes of that. Given the way the Chinese film market is trying to develop content which is going to sell in the West, and now that the three body problem has made headlines in, in the West for, for one particular reason, but actually winning is, is the better reason, hopefully, we'll see something exciting come out of the film adaptation. And then the other part of the Hugo news, which is exciting, although it's not strictly a Hugo Award, it's the John W. Campbell Award for Best New Writer from 2012 or 2013 went to Wesley Chu, who is also a writer of Chinese descent. I've read a few of his short stories. I do rate him, and I'm kind of really excited to read uh, his novels, which I know have been out for a while, so I'll put some links up as well. So that was exciting news this week around the Hugo Awards and, and kind of diversity within publishing. I don't want to talk about the kind of the, the negatives of the, of the puppy slate because I don't really know the ins and outs of it. What was interesting was to see who came out of the woodwork as a puppy and they're actually people I've read in the past who I didn't think were very good. So I think that the reason they don't get voted for these awards is just because they don't have the quality there. So let's be honest, people are voting with their feet. And in, in the rest of my quest to read more diversely, uh, I want to read more British women writers. And what's been difficult for me is to find writers that I'm interested in reading. I really want to read Doris Lessing's science fiction series. Although most of them are in print at the moment, which is a bit sad. And the reason she pops back into my head is because I saw a list from Science Fiction Mistress Works. And I read about 25 of the 100 works, which I thought was quite a, quite a good number for me. Most of them are out of print. That's going to make it a bit more difficult, but I am going to start plowing through those. I have read the, those authors. I've read some of their other books. It's not as if I've been a complete loss to science fiction them, but there are books on there which I should have read, if you like. I'm going to go back and read some of the list as well, because I think that there's some really exciting things on there. Sighteen by CJ Cherry is going to help me write my next thing. I'm writing a short story at the moment, which I'm going to submit to People of Colour Destroy Science Fiction. It's being edited by Nalo Hopkinson and Christine Ong Muslim, so I'm really excited to even be inspired to write something like that. I'm writing from the viewpoint of four seemingly female points of view. That's where some of the story lies and whether they are female or not. That's the question that's being asked at the moment around trans issues. I wanted to pull that into this short story. I'm writing as a British Chinese writer. I'm definitely going to use some influences from my heritage. That's what I would hope this book is about. In terms of reading more women, I've read more American women writers than I would normally, certainly outside of science fiction fantasy, so Karen Joy Fowler. Probably her most famous book to date was the Jane Austen Book Club, but last year she published We Are Almost Completely Beside Ourselves, and that was a bestseller. I've got that, I haven't read it yet, but I did read Sister Noon, which is one of her previous historical novels, which was just amazing. I think she's wonderful. She creates these characters who are intriguing, mysterious, and surprise you from out of nowhere. I think that that's that's the mark of a great book that keeps you guessing till the very end. But one of the books that I'm reading this week is Economics by Hadrian Chang. I got interested in it because I've been watching Crash Course Economics to kind of work out what I understand of economics, and it's it's interesting how little I did know, which is great. You know, I think you know you can always learn something new. I'm reading Hajin Chang's Economics: The User's Guide because it's an introduction to economics. So hopefully, it'll give me more of an insight into why the world is the way that it is right. And the interesting about economics is that it's not about money necessarily; it's about goods, services, and exchange. And it's a really interesting and necessary subject that everyone should have an opinion on because we wouldn't be where we are 
if everyone knew a little bit more about why the world works the way that it does or doesn't in some respects. It does start almost immediately from the recession of 2008 onwards. So I think it gives you a, a good insight into what got us to there and what might take us out of it. So another short one for me today. Um, I haven't been out and about today, so I kind of want to talk to you all about what I've been reading and, and kind of responding to the news. And I think the Hugo Awards thing is, is fascinating. If you catch up with it on Twitter, I don't know which, which side of the fence you sit on. You might fall in the same camp as I do. So if you go to my Twitter feed, you, you'll kind of find and the people that I follow, you'll see you know, that I follow a whole load of writers who are actually, obviously, slightly more into the diversity than, than, than the, the conservative side. It's worthwhile having a look, uh, and you might actually fall for the conservatives, you know, and that's fine because people are entitled to their opinions. There is a reality, and that is that science fiction and fantasy has always been diverse, and just because it's published in English doesn't mean that's all there is that's available. The win by Duchishan is really exciting because it just shows that science fiction doesn't have to be only by people who are white. I could talk about Afrofuturism as well today, but uh, I don't know as much about that as I'd like to, but I'm going to try and find out a lot more. Obviously I've read Samuel Delaney, who is just amazing. But there's a whole load of other people around that, certainly around music making and, and image makers, who, who would give you much more of a wider picture of what Afrofuturism is. Anyway, we'll come back to that another day. So I'll say goodbye for now. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up, please subscribe, because then you get to see more of my lovely face.